Hey everyone, this is Nate and this is the Nader Tater channel. Alright, today we're going to cover how to speed up this Chester Cheetah 5G cellular router. And now I've covered lots of videos on this and how impressive the speed is. They did uh, give it a nickname before it didn't have a name. It was just called the Chester router. Uh, but they have other routers out there now too. So this one's called the Cheetah. And um, it is very impressive, but there's still a need for some people to use an external antenna. That's either because of where they want to place this inside, or they have maybe metal roof, or they need the antenna up high. Whatever the reason is, people want to know, does a 4x4 MIMO antenna really help me out, even when I have a third-party router? Now, I have other videos out there for other routers, as well as for the stock T-Mobile home internet gateways and Verizon home internet gateways. They're on my channel if you want to check those out. But for this one, I was going to originally do a video of both this Chester Cheetah and this MoFi. Um, this is the 5500 gateway with this um, waveform 4x4. Unfortunately, I ran into a snag with this MoFi where it was uh, not connecting for me. I don't want to blame it because I have been messing with it, but I didn't have time to troubleshoot it and get it working in time for this video. So for this video, it's just going to be on the Cheetah. Now, what I want to show you guys is lots of data in a nice, organized format so that you can digest it. So I will cover that um, on my tablet live with you here. Now, what we did is I worked with both um, Alfredo from Chester Tech Repairs that sells this unit, as well as Waveform that sells the antennas. And we got the configuration that works the best between their suggestions and my testing. So I will go through um, what I did there to make it all match up nice and clean. It does matter which um, antenna lead you put into which port here. So there's four antenna ports for the cellular and they're polarized. So you have to actually make sure that you are um, one, uh, having the polarized pairs be connected correctly. And then two, that um, because it's a MIMO setup, the, um, the polarization needs to be matched across the two different uh, pairs in there. All right, so real fast, let me show you some of the, the data here. Now, this is the WAN speed, so this is the ISP speed, and I'm using a speedtest.net app, and I was using this tablet here, and I was actually connected via Ethernet directly to the Chester, so I wasn't using Wi-Fi, just because I had some people complain. I've tested both the 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi and Ethernet, I get no difference in speed if I'm super close, but it is by Ethernet for those that uh, that care. Now, what you'll see with this chart is it's super busy and it's not very clean and you don't know what it says. That's because I want you to keep watching so I can dive through the details because the details really do matter. If you've done any of your own speed testing on cellular stuff, you see how variable it can be, both from time of day, what kind of connections you have, this gateway has the ability to do band locking and so I wanted to answer some questions as well of not just what do I get but I want to give a better idea for what other people can get in speed so this has both 4G LTE only no 5G tested in here it has uh, different locations in my house tested it has just the stock unit it has the uh, 4x4 MIMO hooked up to it um, it has N71, which is 5G extended for T-Mobile, and it has N41, which is 5G ultra capacity for T-Mobile, as well as different uh, 4G LTE anchors in there. So this is the speed. I also cover latency, and they are big differences. Um, I will say the number one um, cluster there is the uh, stock gateway of what I got. So I recorded download, upload, uh, the unloaded ping, loaded download ping, loaded upload ping, as well as what uh, bands I was on. So lots of data um, to talk about here. All right, and so for this testing, I am using a T-Mobile SIM card. I'm using a T-Mobile 5G business card, which allows you to bring your own device. This does allow a T-Mobile home internet SIM card. You had to do a little bit of tricks. I have videos out there for that. I'll see if I can throw a link to it right up here in the top corner, but otherwise search my channel for that. All right, let me show you what I did with the setup now. I did the office, which is on the first floor of my house, and this is what I would say is typical that you could get with um, you know, a gateway in your house, and this is what you're constrained to. And then the loft is above that, 
and that is where I moved the gateway, still stock to do testing, but then I also left the gateway there, but then I did the antennas out there. So let me show you the loft and what it looks like so you understand the difference here because the key thing to know with the antenna is its real benefit is that you can place it where um, it gets the best signal and you're not constrained to like um, you know weather or climate or anything that you have to worry about with the gateway itself. If you put the antenna right beside the gateway, you know your speed difference isn't going to be as great as if you're going from the office and then you're going up into the attic or outdoors with the antenna and getting that signal. That's that's really where the benefit of the antenna really shines. All right, so here is the cheetah up here on the third floor loft. And you can see in here in the attic space, I have the four by four set up. I also have a two by two, but I'm not using that for this testing. Just using this four by four set up here. And you can see these cables here are labeled. And, you know, basically um, these are different polarizations uh, like a plus minus plus minus type setup so that is pointed towards my tower that's about uh, one mile away and as you can see obviously being in the attic this signal does go through this uh, one um, piece of sheathing and then asphalt shingles before it goes outside so not the perfect scenario but um, it's better than being um, going through a wall all right, so let's go uh, down here to the speeds and just break it down on just download speed and upload speed so it's something that's easy to digest. And then what you can see here is that I ordered these in slowest to fastest within the little shaded blocks. So the shaded blocks are um, different configurations or different locations. So the first one is in my office on the first floor of the house with just the stock Chester Cheetah. And you can see that um, the auto setting is actually the um, the number one, which is you know third in line there. Um, they're not in numerical order, but it got 104 megabits per second download, but it got 0.9 megabits per second upload. So terrible upload. And I've seen that many times before. This is on N41, and we'll go into more details on what bands they were on uh, in a second here. But that was the Cheetah just auto setting that didn't do any kind of band locking. And then I started messing with it um, to, to change some settings and do, go to 4G, go to N71. Uh, and then you can see we moved the Cheetah unit stock still, but now we moved it up to the loft. So now we're higher in the house, but it's still inside. And you can see that I had some much better speeds. Again, here I'm messing with both 4G and 5G signals and band locking in here. And then lastly, in the green uh, shaded area, I'm in the loft still, but now I'm hooked up to that 4x4 MIMO panel that's in the attic. And the attic's at the same level, actually, as the loft. It's just, you know, um, a little bit, 20 or 30 feet away. So, um, here you can see, again, I did get my fastest speeds, especially my upload. You can really see the uploads, you know, are the lowest ones at that 36 uh, megabits per second. And um, the fastest before was under 15. So, I've doubled my upload with that antenna but then you can see that um, I did get my fastest download as well but not by a huge margin compared to my best stock one actually out there but we'll go into that a little bit and some of the benefits of ping that shows up and that's actually uh, probably a bigger um, aid that that antenna provides for this setup so we'll go through in more detail each of these to understand exactly what makes a difference because I think this will help you understand in your specific scenario if you know what kind of bands you get um, out there. So let's break it down and just go to the speeds of the uh, stock unit down in the office. And so you can see down below the, the graphs there I have um, some columns that have many rows you see they're all stock, so that means stock antenna. The next line up from the bottom, you see it says office, that's the location. Then you can see if I'm on 5G or 4G. And then you can see my bands. And the first one is like the primary band, then the secondary band, and a, and a third band. This one can actually do, I think, five bands aggregated for download. The most I saw in testing uh, was uh, three. But I have done testing where if I leave it on there for longer, it can get uh, four. Um, sometimes I've seen 
before. But for all this testing, I'm maybe letting it settle for like five minutes or so. It probably is better if I were to wait like 30 minutes actually for each setup. I just don't have time for that. So um, what you can see here is on N71, I got 46 uh, down and about 7 uh, megabits per second up. That was certainly a big improvement in upload from the 0.9 that it got on the default setting, which was stuck on N41. N41 is known to have worse upload speed because of the way that they um, segment the data. Um, so I switched it to N71, and that helped my upload a lot, but you know, cut my download in half. And then I said, you know what, let's cut off 5G altogether and just do 4G. As you can see, arguably, that's actually my best speed in my office was actually to tell it to just stay on 4G LTE, and it was able to grab three bands to aggregate them together, and that actually gave me better download speed than N71 5G in that location. And again, I guess the big asterisk here is that is that location. I am not claiming that 4G LTE is faster than 5G N71, but it can be sometimes, especially with a gateway that aggregates lots of those 4G signals together. Okay, so um, then let's go up to the loft now. And so here you can see that this is the stock antennas again with that uh, second to bottom row. Then we can see locations in the loft, and you can see that three of the four tests are in uh, 5G mode versus one is in 4G mode. And then you can see for all of them, actually, my primary um, band was this 4G um, B2 band, but then I have a range of N71, B71, which is the 4G uh, version of it, um, and then N41, and um, the last row there I have, or last column, sorry, I have, is N41, and I've added B66 as well. So that one is three bands that are aggregated together. Obviously, that gives you the best speed by having those all aggregated together. Um, but this gives you an idea of the range of speed that I see, and what's so cool about this Chester uh, Cheetah Gateway is that band locking ability. So you can go through and find for your needs exactly what gives you the best speed. So let's now go up to um, the loft and now we put on the 4x4 MIMO antenna and let's see how that kind of compares here. Now again, I specifically wanted to do 5G N71 and I wanted to do 4G LTE and so I forced those modes on the Chester gateway so I could show you the differences that the antenna make. So if we look here on 5G N71, you can see this one is 103 down and 36 upload. If we go just up, we can see that before it was 74 down and 15 upload. So that antenna gave us, you know, what's that, like 30% or something more download speed and looks like uh, over doubled the upload speed. So if you are on 5G N71, same Cheetah Gateway, stock antennas to 4x4 MIMO, um, then you are going to see a big improvement in 5G and 71. If we look at 4G, you can see now the 4G is doing um, 107 down and 36 up, so almost the exact same performance actually as the 5G in 71 setup, whereas before that 4G setup only had two bands, and it was doing 87 for down and uh, about 12 up. So again, um, very significant increases in download and upload and everyone um, has their own opinion on how to do this testing you know I've had some people that say oh Nate you know you are doing a terrible job because this one has B66 as a primary this other one has B2 and I'm doing whatever the gateway is saying is optimal for it and gives me the best speed in that location with those uh, configurations sometimes it might be B66, sometimes it might be B4, sometimes it might be B2. Whichever one is the fastest is what I'm going to report. Here for the last column there, we have N41 with B2 and B66. And this is 179 down and 64 up. If we scroll back up to this one, this one had the same um, three channels that, that were aggregated. But our speed was, you know, it's not drastically different. That's what, 20 um, megabits per second extra that we get uh, with a 4x4. But our uh, upload is, uh, what's that, quadruple, you know, over quadruple um, the speed for um, the upload. So big improvement there. 
Let's look at ping now because ping is another big uh, heartache for a lot of people on cellular. Cellular is not the best for ping, but that's where we're getting a cleaner signal, uh, which is really what the waveform antenna is main focus, I would say, is more like signal to noise. And some people think, oh, I'm going to get more bars. You don't need more bars of signal uh, for signal strength. You really need a cleaner signal so that you can get the best uh, data throughput. So let's go into ping here, our latency. Now this one again I've broken out into the three boxes and so you can see I had everywhere this is in milliseconds so every thousand milliseconds is one second so you can see here on my upload pings I was bad as 2.7 seconds for an upload ping which is ridiculous and it's terrible um, so you don't want that and um, that one is what you want to reduce for both download and upload so you can have good video conferencing gaming um, you know that kind of stuff you want lower latency so what you can see here just by the height of these shaded regions the outlier by far is the waveform antenna and you can see that it has much lower ping I would still say these are not great pings by any means but I don't get great pings with T-Mobile here and um, other people can get little get way better than I even have my best case here um, with just a stock T-Mobile unit and that's fine um, and this here is to show you differences so understand that this maybe doesn't represent what you see but the relative difference between these should be an indicative of what you could expect by um, doing the same kind of testing that I'm doing here so this really uh, highlights that you get a benefit from the antennas not just with speeds but also with ping out there all right so i'm just going to flash this up on the screen so you can see it you can pause the video and you can digest that data yourself as well if you really want to